master speakers and uh, all the other details we talked about last week. Uh, if you don't get one for sure, you should walk those in about halfway through class, and if you don't get one, make sure you come get one so you have a copy of it. Hopefully we'll get the nine courses issued to resolve uh, later this, uh, this week. Okay, so today we're going to take just a quick sidebar and do something a little different, and this will be the last class that you really have to listen to me before the class, so that's good news for you. Um, we're going to do something called elevator pitches today, and who knows what an elevator pitch is? A few of you, okay. So the concept is that you're in this hypothetical elevator, right? And you're riding down from the top floor, or maybe up to the floor, where this investor, or this magic guy with a ton of money, you're trying to convince them to either purchase your product or put money in your company. So you really only have the ride of the elevator to pitch your company. So this is generally a 30 to 20, 120 second long pitch, um, more like 30 to 90 seconds. And it's part art and part science, right? You're just trying to convey the idea of, of what that business is about, and then also try to entice them and, and give them more. And you probably already know of a very famous guy, uh, hopefully you still know who this guy is, um, and that might be this guy, right? Very famous pitchman who uh, was known for OxyClean and a few others. Who doesn't know who this is? Just off of curiosity. All right, so everybody's still old He's enough to remember him. Um, so yeah, I mean that's what he got good at. He got good at selling this product, OxyClean, and convincing you that it was worth buying. And maybe not you, but millions of others who poured cash into it. So we're going to look at a few others. Um, but the first question that's really important for the entire class is, what makes a business a business? Any ideas? Go for it. And if you know the answer, you've seen this pitch. Shut up for now. Profit. Profit's a good answer. What's what makes a business a business? Entrepreneur. What else? Supply and demand. Okay. Making money. Sales. Sales. Right. Sales is what makes a business a business. I had a business partner that had this quote: "So business without sales is the world's most expensive hobby." And that's so true, right? Whatever it is that you're doing, if you can't get people to pay you money for it, it's not really a business. And so that's what we want to talk about in these elevator pitches. It's not only what product does it make, but also who does it sell, who does it sell to, and then how, how do they pay you for it. So think about Facebook, for instance, right? Or even Google is a good example. Facebook, who's the customer? Sorry? Advertisers, somebody over here said it. Advertisers are the customers. Advertisers are the ones that pay Facebook's bills and makes them into a multi-million dollar company because they're advertising based on the value that Facebook's providing them of this user pool and all this data. All right, how about Google? Again, advertisers, right? Advertisers are their customers. So when Google's making a pitch, Google's pitching about how it delivers superior performance in ad, in ad insights to that customer base and potential customer base. So think about that when you're working on your pitches today. We're going to do an in-class assignment in just a moment. But first, I want to show you some examples of how sales, or otherwise lack thereof, impacts the pitch. So let's look at an example. This is some guys that went on Shark Tank, or these are some guys that went on Shark Tank uh, to pitch a concept. They're actually from Ridgeland, Mississippi. We're not going to watch all 11 minutes of this, but we'll watch a bit of it. It's called Misorganized. There are three symptoms. Lost homework, being late for class, and falling grades. But I have found the cure, and it is Locker Bone. Sharks, this is a simple product that eliminates the mess, reduces the stress. Locker Bones is the best. And remember, an organized student is a successful student. So sharks, come one, come all, but join us in improving the organizational skills of our future leaders with the ninth wonder of the world, Locker Bones. It'll take just a moment, but I'd like to take this out, put it right back, and you'll see exactly how it works. I'd like to see that. Right. I want you to know as he's putting that together, there are no tools that are needed with this at all. 30 seconds, it's in and out. Steve, what does it cost? cost yeah. A single is $29.95. And a double, which is normally the 12 inch, is $39.95. This might show you the patented product. Our kids going to make that a wood shop? Actually, they might, but they can't. There's a lot of precision to this. They can't make that mark. The reason is, is because that has been patented. 
Oh, so you're going to sue a bunch of seventh graders? Yeah. Get involved in that. We are going to get seventh graders to put that in their locker. You know, They're going to have it no problem. It's just easier to buy it. Absolutely. Once you take the two sides, settle them in, you take one piece and you put it in any location you want on that track system. This becomes the first vertical divider in a locker because what happens is folders fall over, they get on top of each other, you can't really keep things standing up. You slide it in, you put it in place. So you now have vertical else, ability to hold the shelves. And here's a question. Nobody else, your competitors, right. do not have a vertical divider. They do not. Here comes your nook and cranny. You get two of these, you can put them anywhere you would like. You can put reading books, you can put your cell phone, let me tell you just briefly how this began. About four years ago, my daughter was going to middle school. It was the night before, she needed a lock organizer the next morning. I went out to the garage, took my table saw out the back porch, and I created the first one. I'm a contractor and a developer, so I had the tools. It was, uh, you know, rough around the edges, but very functional. So she woke up the next morning, looked at it, and goes, Dad, I'm not taking this to school. <laughs> she knows me. We've done this many it's times. never appreciate anything we do for them. Ever. No. Well, the telling sign was two girls walked behind this first day at a new school, and they looked, and they said, cool, where'd you get that wooden one? We made about eight or nine of them for just close people she had met that first little bit. But then the school organizational director, the one who goes and checks the lockers, contacted me and said, this, is, this really works. And this he ordered functional. 500 of them on the spot. We got 60 orders. We have more parents come to us and say, why didn't we have that when we... Sharks, that is called... And checks lockers, contacted me and said, this, is, this really works. And he ordered 500 of them on the spot. We got 60 orders. We have more parents come to us and say, why didn't we have that when we were... Sharks, that is... We got 60 uh, orders. We have more parents come to us. All right, awesome. Well, you missed the whole point of this video, but... Um, <laughs> all right. Anyway, later on the, in, the, in the discussion, he, he basically drops the bomb that they haven't really sold any of these. They've sold like 200 of them in a year. You see the whole panel of sharks, what is this all about? You know, they, they freak out because there's no sales behind it, and that's not going to excite anybody until you show that people are willing to pay money for it. That's disappointing that that's not working. All right. So anyway, let's move on and look at a student pitch. Um, this is one from Utah State that is a good example of an elevator pitch. Let's try it. My name is Josh Light and I'm the CEO of CupAd. And we believe that we have the most effective form of advertising available in the market today. Our advertisements are exposed to customers for 2,220 seconds on average. Now what kind of advertising has that kind of exposure time? Ladies and gentlemen, we advertise on coffee cups. That's right, we put your brand in their hand. So how does coffee cup advertising work? Well, we got an advertiser. They pay us money. We produce paper coffee cups with their advertisement or brand on it. Then we give these coffee cups to coffee stands for free. Now, why does someone want to advertise on a coffee cup? Because it takes an individual 37 minutes to drink a cup of coffee on average. That person's going to have to look at the cup, drink, look at the cup, drink 20 times before it's fully consumed. And that person's going to move around like a mobile billboard, exposing that brand to at least six different individuals before that cup is drank. Why does cup, what's in it for cup ad? We make 13 cents of profit on every single cup that we distribute. And what's in it for the coffee stands? Well, when most people think about coffee stands, they think about Starbucks. But what about the 25,000 coffee stands in this nation that have plain white cups like this? They don't, have, they don't have the economies to scale to put their own brand on the cup. So we give them free cups. They save $15,000 a year by not buying cups. They like these savings so much, ladies and gentlemen, that approximately 80% of the stands that we've con contacted have signed exclusivity agreements to distribute our cups. What kind of momentum have we started for this company? The last month alone, we got 58 coffee stands in California to sign exclusivity agreements with us to distribute our cups. If we continue to get 58 coffee stands every single month for the next 12 months, we will have 700 coffee stands at the end of the year. With 700 coffee stands, we can move 8 million cups a month. And at 13 cent profit, 8 million cups a month, we're making over a million dollars of profit every single month. And we've already started this, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, our first customer, Overstock.com, will see their cups hit the California market in 21 days. Thank you very much. Right, so what was most impressive about his pitch? You know what he was 
just talking about what else? And numbers. And numbers. Right? You throw out the brand at the end, overstock.com. Everybody probably knows that brand, right? So he's, he's immediately showing you, A, there's dollar value potential. He talks about if we you know, bring on all these coffee stands, doing this. So he, he demonstrates that there's scalability to it. But he also is making it very real at the end and saying, hey, we've already got a deal with Overstock. We've got 58 places already signed up for this. It's a real deal and it's moving now. So you can see how much of an impact, regardless of what you think of the idea, right, you're left with the impression that, okay, they know what they're doing and they're moving, right? Cool. All right, so now that you get the idea, what we're going to do is form teams in this class, uh, 10 to 12 teams, no less than six people, no more than 12 people in a team. So just look around your group, get together. Um, here's what I want you to do. You're going to make up a problem or identify a problem this that you think. It can be whatever you want. Make it real, right? So come up with a problem and create a solution. Now, we know you're not going to obviously generate, solve world hunger today, right? But come up with something that you can solve today and come up with a business narrative around it. All right, you have, you'll have to develop a 60-second pitch. And at the end of this, uh, near the end of class, we're going to all get together have one person from each team come up and pitch your product and solution and try to sell us just like that guy did on the coffee cups. All right, and these are the points that you want to hit. So uh, diving into these a little bit, obviously, what are you solving? Remember the coffee cup example? He said that coffee stands don't have the economies of scale to produce cups with their brands on it. What other problem is he solving? He's giving a, a new mechanism. It's not really a problem. Maybe it's an opportunity. But he's giving a mechanism for people to put their brand in front of people. And that's their solution with this coffee cup model, right? Target customers, who is he selling to? He's basically trying to segment everybody who's not Starbucks. Maybe that's a good approach, maybe not. It's a debate for a different day. Competitors, he kind of talked about the competitors out there. And then how do you get it out there? Finally, there's a point missing on here, of course, is the numbers part, which you won't have yet. But talk about how you sell it. Who do you sell it to and how do you sell it? All right, this is a lot to encapsulate in 60 seconds. It takes a lot of work. In fact, we finished our summer accelerator just last week, and these guys worked almost all summer trying to perfect that image and that craft. We talked about that a little bit last week. So go ahead right now and form up little teams, and you all start talking about ideas. What we'll do is it's 3.15, I'm sorry, 2.15 now. We'll do this until about 2.35-ish, uh, somewhere in there. That gives you about 20 minutes to work on this. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 I tried to tell you that last <laughs> week. I need it. <laughs>
It's gotta be a completely new watch brand. You have to convince watch no, stores. It's gonna be a thing you put on the watch. But you'd have to put it on here. Right? You can put it right there. You can put it anywhere on the band. We don't have to make the product, we just have a concept of the product. It ain't even gotta be a watch. It can just be a band like this. I want to fly. I think watch is going to be Part of the pitch. Oh, we can do watches and things. Yeah, it says in the original shift. Wrist wear. Oh, that's the orange. Guys, when I did this on the ground, think in the ground. Pitch, pitch, pitch. Stay away from 2000. No, it's the name. Shake and wait. Shake and wait. Shake and wait. Shake and wait. Shake and Shake and wait. 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 Shake and Shake and wait. Shake and wait. Shake and wait. Shake and Shake and wait. 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 Shake and 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 Shake and wait. Shake
band, you can put it on your ankle or something like that. Yeah, maybe you can shock your ankle. Oh, see, yeah, you put it on a hand. Yeah, it's weird. They sell it at the store, and you can put it like a college logo on that. That's what sells a lot. But, you're talking about just putting bands? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, a watch would probably want to make it big, but it's probably so easy to do. Bracelet, it's a brand. It's a brand. Alright, you can do this. Guys, it's a brand. I don't know how many people are Everybody! You're going to say, here's the problem. We have to have a name. I don't know. Yeah. Wake me up. Wake me up. I'm just kidding. Five bands. Five bands. Five bands.
say that. So we don't know where you're going to make it. Is there an average drop of 64 to 52? So, can you get drop? Yeah. 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 So, I guess. So, our product is the shaky. Is that when you're an RE in place? Walk over to use my screen. You're an embarrassing person to talk about your head. Yeah, because this happened in the last year. Oh, it's all the way. Dude, we have a teacher that was like, that. you got a nice sales. I said, that's why I like to make you come in. I tried to go back out of Oh, yeah, I'm going to try to make uh, all right. So our problem is following the super five. Solution is this. Target customers yeah, follow suit. Competitors. Yeah. Yeah. Competitors. How are we going to distribute? Follow bookstores. Bookstores, yeah. Yeah, Around college town. Distribution. How makes money? We Best buy. Charge them. Best buy and college. We win. Let's say it's roughly three. Does it already exist? You could eat it. That one is like two bottles. Just in terms of how much we're taking a product that we're able to do. That's the idea. Call it the price or shine. We even do it gradually. We can sell it for 10 seconds on the last year. So we just wait five seconds. So another it's, it's another sixty bucks of customers is an Sixty dollars for the average day sale. They have a problem. They have a problem. They just fall asleep. They cannot stay awake. Is that? That's not like when you just pass out. Insomnia is where they don't sleep at night. Dude, like some of them, some of them have that enough where they can. You can't drive. Are you kidding me? No, our product is worth $117.30. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to get up there? Uh, $17.30. Yeah. Is that $17.30? But you got to set it on the other $17.30. What's our market? How much are we making per thing? We ain't making so much. It doesn't matter because we don't know how much we're doing. We don't even have to say it. Non profit organization. Seriously, like 30 for a regular and 40 for a custom. I'm not going to lie, I've been not playing around with the other line. Oh, dude, you can probably watch it too, too. I mean, kill the time. First of all, let's find out where all our groups are. We have one group here. We are group one, group two, group three, group four, group Get over there, 
they have it ready for you in the pickup line. So we have developed an app to do that. Now we will partner with Aramark, which is people who own uh, the restaurants here, and we have two customers. One is Aramark, and two are you, is you guys. We will advertise to them and say, look, you can use this app and display all the restaurants in the college setting. That will promote any restaurants that are there and provide them with valuable information from the students eating there. Another thing is that if you want food, there is a convenience fee. So 1%. You get to birth. Oh, oh, six, uh, then I got nine, I'm all the one. Out of time. We didn't have that. That's a short elevator. Yeah, dude. Nice job, man.
Um, our target customers are college students, and uh, there aren't any real competitors to what we're trying to do right now. And uh, the app costs 99 cents on the app store. There's 50 million you know, students to buy it, so there's a really great market for it. All right. trying to find that one open spot that you always miss and someone takes it for you? No. No, you don't like that. Well, Campus Odyssey is here to help you with your problems. Now, you've got other apps like Waze, and they're uh, crowdsourced map kind of apps, but none of them really work very well on your campus. They're too wide, they're too general. But Campus Odyssey, we've got features. We do parking helper. Each user updates where he parked his car, and that updates our live map to tell you uh, how, full that, how full that parking lot is. Um, we also do traffic updates to let you know how bad traffic is on, you know, just your common roads, engineering road, other places like that, and also the times if they're very full. And uh, we also do things like road hazards for construction work, because there's construction work every, everywhere, every day on this campus, and it slows you down in different places. Now we take advertising, oh man. <laughs> Alright guys, here's Chris presenting to you today from Group 8. 
have always had a problem with their players being hurt. Now, with our product, Bottle Sense, we tend to try to eliminate that problem. Now, what it is, is it's a product that will go inside the helmet that will measure for concussions and temperatures. Now, what this will do will prevent the player from having further concussions after one is detected, and will also prevent heat strokes and other related illnesses from that. Now, how would the player, uh, how would the team know that this player just got hurt? Well, we have also developed an app that will receive this data via Bluetooth. Now, this system will cost $70 per unit. And we plan on trying to market this to NFL teams, NCAA teams, and also Pee Wee. And that's pretty much it. Awesome. Nice job.
you with your significant other, you know, maybe you're drunk late at night, or you know, you just ran out of condoms. But what we have here is a quick and easy app. So what you gotta do is you just go onto your phone, go with the quick and easy app, you can deliver. So that's our biggest point. So we deliver condoms right to you late at night. You know, we party on the weekends, you know, during the weekdays, we can, you know, get into all the on the weekends and do a party, and we can target all the women too. We got women condoms, diaphragms, you know, the singles. <laughs>
uh, a lot of money. It's like a half million or half million dollars and up per license, if I'm not mistaken. So that'll be a really interesting talk. He'll tell you how he started it from the beginning, graduated from finance here. E Club meets tonight at seven. Sorry? Whatever. <laughs> this, this, this group meets tonight. It's the entrepreneurship group um, at 7 p.m. at Socially In. Socially In is a student founded company. There's a guy here on campus that the senior in marketing. He started this company that's now has eight employees. So that's where we'll be meeting tonight. It's in the Synergetics building on 12. If you're not familiar, load that address in GPS. Free Chick-fil-A. So that's a good incentive. Uh, the Huff, that's the software development group. Uh, they're going to meet Thursday at 6.30 at the MSU Business Incubator. Anybody who's interested in software development, go check those guys out. A lot of cool things going on there too. So any other questions? Make sure you drop a sheet of paper with your favorite team today and what team you were on and your name and that ID, either or. Also, if you didn't get a syllabus, I have more copies of the syllabus up here. Make sure you get one. See you next week.